Hello, this is a tutorial on using the AI Dental RPD Designer and Game. Here I am on the AI Dental website. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to reach that website. Now let's start with the RPD Designer. I'm going to go ahead and click this button. This will take you to this page right here. In here you'll see two arches from which you can select the missing teeth and a list of available RPD design philosophies. You'll start by selecting the missing teeth. You'll notice that as I do this, the Kennedy classification gets determined automatically over here. So I'm going to go ahead and design a class 2 mod 1. Click next. As you see here, the app automatically suggests the direct and indirect retainers for you. However, you can customize that to your liking. The app gives you freedom to choose which abutments are used by retainers and which receive only rests and which are bypassed altogether. Using this key right here, you can see that when you click on a tooth, you can assign it to have a direct retainer and a rest, a rest only, or a direct retainer and a rest even if it means crossing an embrasure. You may also select the design philosophy at this stage. And notice how the selections of direct and indirect retainers change from one design philosophy to the next. After you have made your selection, go ahead and click Next. As you see here, design is automatically suggested. You may still change that design for different design philosophies by clicking on them. Additionally, if you'd like to add more teeth to the design, you could still click them using the key mentioned previously. The design will change in real time based on your selection. You may also change the major connector by clicking down here. You have the option of adding a lingual plate to the teeth, changing the major connector to a horseshoe major connector, or having a full paddle plate. When you're satisfied with the design you have so far, go ahead and click next you'll see that there's a green arrow that appears next to tooth number two. Tooth number two appears right here as well. Well, that means that this column right here is where you're gonna customize all the different attributes of the abutment tooth number two. So you can select the retentive undercut to be on the buckle or the lingual, and you can see the retentive undercut changes in real time. You'll also be able to select if the retentive undercut is on the mesial, distal, or both. Notice how the clasp changes in real time as we make those selections. You'll be also able to select the depth of the undercut, whether 0.01 or 0.02, whether there's a soft tissue undercut or not, and whether the patient is aesthetically conscious or not. In this case, being a molar, it is automatically selected to no. Then move on to the next tooth. We'll follow the same technique, and notice as we go through it, how the list of available clasps on this side changes. Once done with the selections, you'd be able to select from the available list of compatible clasps to indicate which clasp appears on the diagram here. Notice how that picture changes in real time as I sift through the different available clasps. Once decided, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next tooth. I'm going to follow the same technique, again, choosing whichever undercuts I have on my case. In some situations, there will be no available clasp for this configuration. In that case, you'll have one of three options to resurvey or modify the contours of the abutment tooth, use precision attachments, or have a fixed restoration on top of that tooth. Now for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to go ahead and make a change here to make a compatible clasp possible. And we're going to go ahead and press next. This is the last page and in that page you'll see a list of all compatible clasps for each abutment tooth based on the selections that you've made plus a diagram of the final design. You'll be able to export this in a PDF by clicking this button right here. This allows for easy communication and sharing between individuals. Now let's move on to the game component. To do that, we can go back to the start screen.
go ahead and press game. You'll be directed to this page right here, which looks very similar to the page we had in the design component. You'll be able to make a selection of which design philosophy you want to use. You'll be able to select the missing teeth, but you can also create a random case by clicking this button up here. Every time you click it, the app will create a random case for you. If you'd like to limit the random case to a certain Kennedy class, you can choose from the drop-down menu over here. Let's for example choose class 3. Now every time I press the button, it will create a random version of a class 3 case. Let's use this one for example. I'm going to go ahead and press next. Now that we are in the game, the user gets to select the Kennedy classification. So I'm going to go ahead and select class 3 with no modifications. You'd also be able to select the major connector. I'm going to go ahead and select an AP strap. And you get to choose the types of retainers you want in your design. Again, using the retainer key down here. I want to have a retainer with a clasp here, so I'm going to have two yellow abutments. I also want to have two rests on two abutments on the other side. This one will also have a clasp, but this one here will only have a rest. And then I'll click Next. The app would automatically generate the different criteria for each abutment, and it is up to the user to make a decision on which clasp to use to be compatible with those criteria. The the green arrow starts at this tooth here, tooth number two. And you can read all the different criteria on this side. You can see that that tooth now has a buckle undercut that is on the distal surface. Its depth is 0.02 inch. It has a soft tissue undercut with three millimeters of buckle vestibule and no aesthetic concerns on this tooth. You can also see some information on the tooth itself. This blue line is indicative of the survey line you can see that it is closer to the surface of the tooth on the distal aspect, signifying that the tooth has a heavier undercut on the distal surface, as per the criteria over here. You can also see that the green arrow is on the buckle, indicating that the undercut is on the buckle surface. You can also see the depth of the undercut right here. We'll use this section here to make a decision on which area of the tooth to place the rest. You have the choice to make the rest on the mesial, distal, or both. I'm going to go ahead with a distal rest, and from the drop-down menu you can make a decision on which clasp to use. I'm going to use the hairpin clasp. Go ahead and click next, and you'll move on to the next abutment. Again, you'll see the criteria over here. For the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and make some random choices in hopes of getting a wrong choice so we'll be able to see the grading in the, in the end. So you'll be able to see the grading in the end. So again, I'll make some random choices here. And I'll just make some really random choices. Uh, let's do... And I'll move forward. Here, you'll be able to see the grading. You can see I scored 6 out of 8, which is 75%. It tells you which areas of this you graded correctly including the Kennedy classification, the modification space, the type of major connector, whether you had lingual plating or not, the abutments that were chosen, and the clasps. You can see here that I've made some wrong decisions when it comes to the clasp on tooth number 12 and tooth number 15. You can also view your own design by clicking here, and the model answer by clicking here. So you can really appreciate where you went wrong. I hope this tutorial was useful on how to use the AI Dental RPD Designer in-game. If you encounter any issues or bugs, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comments section and we'll be happy to answer it. Thank you for joining us.